Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Good morning, Crossroads Church. Man, I love you guys. 10 o'clock service. It's going to be a great service. Are you all ready this morning? Those of you who are online, appreciate you guys showing up at 10 o'clock. If you're in Seguin, just drive on over to the west side. No, what is this side? This is the east side. And um, get right before the highway, you'll see us here. We need you here in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Don't play hooky. And so this morning, we are going to be addressing a subject that's very necessary. We're in a series entitled, Not That Again. And we're talking about, it's in a, in a relational kind of a context, a relational series. And these are issues that we address that we go up and it's like, man, not that again, not that again. Or Bill comes in or something happens, not that again. Or sometimes we're dealing with just certain things, it's like it's a reoccurring thing over. So we're looking at different uh, things that happen in our lives, in our, in our relationship, and addressing some of those things. This morning, the topic of this morning's message is jealousy. Oh, great. I'm going to be meddling a little bit. No, it's going to be good. Uh, a few days ago, Natalie was asking me a question. She goes, hey, do you remember when we first had my first job that I had? I was like, no, I don't remember. Of course, we met, for those of you who don't know, we met when we were 13 and 14. And um, so when she was young, she found her first job. It was at, used to be a, a record store downtown. This Amador's, right, babe? What was it called? JP's. JP's. And so I was like, oh, yeah. I said, I remember that little place. People used to go hang out downtown. It's like, did you like it? He goes, yeah, I liked it. He goes, but I had to quit. It's like, why? Because you were jealous. I'm like, what? He says, what do you mean? He goes, I, you were jealous. You were wondering who I was talking to all the time, so I just quit. It's like, oh, man, I'm sorry. I was a jerk, wouldn't I? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> so it's like, so what was the second job? Because then I got another job at, it used to be called The Entertainer. It used to be a restaurant years ago. And she used to wash dishes or do whatever they were telling her to do. And I was like, did you like that one? He goes, not really. He goes, but I had to quit that one, too. I was like, why? He says, because you were jealous. Because I mean, you were wondering who I was talking to. You were wondering what was going on. It's like, forget it. It's not, it's not worth it. I just quit. It's like, well, good for you. And uh, so the third job, <laughs> she goes, so she got another job at, um, where's the third one at? At Jack in the Box. And, uh, of course, you know, guys are in there drunk at night and whatever. They're always hitting on her or whatever. And I was in a band at that time. And we used to go and travel around the local area. At this time, on Halloween, we were going to be at a, um, a college place, a college joint down in San Marcos. And we were doing a party down there with them. And so I, I wanted Natalie to go with us. So I go to Jack in the Box. And I was like, hey, he goes, come to this party thing with me. He goes, well, I'm working. I was like, ah, just quit. Just forget it. So she quit. And we, we weren't Christians, okay? Just want to let you know. And so we, we took off. And I'm at, this, I'm at this gig out there and just jamming and stuff like that. And it's um, intermission time, and so at that time, they have all these kegs and stuff, and I'm over there gra grabbing a beer, and this gal walks in. Of course, it's a Halloween party. College students, they're dressed in whatever. There's all kinds of stuff happening. This is like in the 80s or so. So this gal comes up, and she's dressed in a piece of foil, like a box foil, and I'm like, what are, what are you? He goes, I'm a piece of hash. For those of you who are ex-drug addicts, this is like hash is not a good thing, okay? Just to let you know. You can look it up on Google. And so she's dressed up as a piece of hash, and I said something stupid, and Natty was right there in front of me. It's like, man, I'd like a piece of that hash, and, because I was a drug addict, right? And of course, everybody's like, yeah, whatever. And so Natty said, yeah, whatever, here's your piece of hash, and she throws the beer at me. Why? Because she's jealous. And I'm like, oh, man, this is not good. So I had to play all the second half of the intermission with all oh, just beer dripping and what have you. And uh, Bianca, my youngest daughter, she was she's here earlier. Uh, she's here, but she, she, yesterday she goes, Dad, what are you preaching on? Because I'm preaching on the topic of jealousy. And she starts laughing and says, what are you laughing at? He goes, you remember the time that we went to the Spurs game? It's like, yeah. He says, we've done it, done it a couple of different times. He goes, and at halftime, remember all the Spurs dancers used to do their little show? And Mom was with us. And at halftime, as soon as she saw the Spurs girls, she said, we need to go get a drink. I'm like, okay, whatever. So because she didn't want me to occupy my eyes with things that didn't concern me, right? And so we go to the area to get some drinks. And of course, right where I'm getting drinks, there's this big old massive TV and they're showing all the Spurs girls there anyways. <laughs> and so it, I mean, it had nothing to do with me. It's more with stuff and insecurities and fears and stuff that she was facing. What was hilarious was a few weeks later, I got a, uh, invited to the Spurs game, you know, in the third or fourth row right behind the Spurs bench when uh, Tim, Timmy was there and Parker and all these guys. And it was kind of cool. But halftime comes, and they're going to do this show again, the Spurs girls. So I'm looking around. I'm like, well, Natalie's not here. 
goes, so I can at least watch the show now, right? And so it just so happened that they were at the house and they turned the TV on to watch the Spurs game and it was halftime and the Spurs girls were on there and they panned the camera to me. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, are you serious? So the next thing I'm getting texts and calls, I'm like, oh Lord, I don't want to go home now. Anyways, but here's what I know about you. Some of us, or all of us have dealt with some type of jealousy. If you've been married to a Latina, you have dealt with this stuff constantly, Right? <laughs> And it's really, it's, it's a human thing, honestly. And so we're looking at that subject because we've all uh, faced some type of jealousy. Maybe it was a child, you know, who all of a sudden he has a new sibling and they, they're, they're seeing that the parents have more affection towards this newborn than them. So there's all different types or gals are always looking at other gals like, man, she thinks she's all that, blah, 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 whatever. She, so sometimes that is just a form of jealousy. Usually there are three areas of jealousy that people contend with. Um, people are concerned about a person's happiness, and it doesn't go well with them. It's like, man, don't you want them to be happy? You should want them to be happy. But usually they're, they're, je- they're jealous because others are happy or others um, are confident or others have certain achievements in their life, and they're jealous of those things. There's all kinds of stuff that, that, that surfaces up. And there's a hurtful jealousy or human type of jealousy, but there's also a holy jealousy because how many guys know that God's name is jealous? And so we're going to take a look at that this morning. But the human side, the corrupt side, the toxic side, the scripture has a whole lot to share about that. And I don't necessarily want to get in your business this morning. I might even just share it next week. But let's take a look at it real briefly because I want to look at the God side, the holy side, because I think it empowers you to live a stronger life in the natural. And so, but in in, in James, the scripture says that where jealousy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing is there. If you're in an environment in your house where jealousy is just running wild, the scripture says that that house or that environment is full of confusion and the selfishness and every evil thing. It's a dark place. You don't want to stay in that place. It's a cloud. What's that character's name in Charlie Brown or Peanuts that's just got a cloud constantly? Yes, that one. So he's just, you're walking around in a cloud like that. And it's just so, um, it's just not a good environment. You want to get out of that environment somehow. And so the scripture goes on to say in Proverbs, the 27th chapter, it says, the rage and anger of others can be overwhelming. Anybody know angry people besides the one sitting next to you? <laughs> right? It says anger, rage and anger of others can be overwhelming, but it's nothing compared to jealousy's fire. That's how deep and, and, and rooted um, is, you know, the scripture talks about that. It manifests in so many different ways. Uh, murder, I mean, it's just so many ways. I mean, usually the toxic type um, goes into manipulation and control and all kinds of stuff. So it's just not healthy. I might address it next week. We'll take a look at it. But let's define it first of all real quick. Uh, the root word, when you take a look at it, the word jealousy, it means to become intensely red. I thought that was interesting, isn't it? Anybody seen a spouse or a Latina get crazy red? You all know that look, Jeremiah. I see when he gets red. <clears throat> but usually there's a difference between envy and jealousy because usually folks talk about envy. So let me just make a distinction real quick. Envy, usually between two people, and these individuals, they're wanting something that someone else has. Envy, I'm envious of that person's you know, six-pack or abs or whatever it is or his achievements or whatever. Jealousy, though, usually involves a third party, three individuals, between three people, fear of losing something you already have to someone else, Okay? My wife is mine, and I see these guys going around like a hawk, like, what's wrong with these guys? And so I'm just protecting my investment, right? And so I just want to make sure that she, his, she's devoted, I'm devoted to her. Actually, I don't even concern, I should not ever concern myself because I can trust her. I just, my role is to over, overwhelm her with my love towards her, help her know that. When I see the insecurities in my life, it's not me blaming her anymore. It used to be. Now it's means like, man, how can I help uh, with that insecurity in her life? How can, I, how can I rearrange my life so that that need might be met? And one of the prayers we pray now, and this is a great prayer to pray, there are some places that your spouse is so insecure in that you'll never have anything that it takes to get it out. You can't do anything about it, but God can. And so our prayer is, God, be to Natalie uh, what I can't be to her. Give to her what I can't give her. I want to give that to her, but it doesn't seem like it's been 44 years or 40-something years. I don't feel like I've ever touched, I can't touch that, that spot there. 
Only you can. And she starts praying the same prayer for me. But that's kind of the definition of it right there. And so this morning, I'm not going to look at the toxic stuff. I'm looking at the holy stuff, the stuff because God is jealous. And I want to take a look at that. Dad Hagen used to tell us, he was my mentor. He said, Marcus, if you teach the God side first, it will empower them to live the man side. And when you take a look at the, the, you know, the, the epistles or whatever, you see that's how Paul wrote. Paul always talked about the God side first. This is who the Father is. This is what he did. This is who you are. You're secure in him. You're his righteousness. You're his beloved, on and on. You know, and then he, then he tells him in verses, I mean, in chapters 3, 4, later on in the books, how to live it. He goes, now that you know this is what God's done and how he's empowered you, now live this way. And so dad would always say, teach the God side first. So I want to take a look at the God side. God, first of all, scripture says he is jealous. In this passage in Deuteronomy, he had just delivered his people out of uh, the, hand, the, the, the enemy's hand, out of Pharaoh, whatever. And he, he, was, he was rescuing his future bride to, to present her to Christ, to his son. And he got them out of an unsafe place into a safe place. And a, a dark place into a place of security and safety and peace. In verse 3 in Deuteronomy 4, it says, Take heed to yourselves. Take heed to yourselves. Take heed to yourselves, not your neighbors, not your spouses, not anyone else. He goes, hey, take care. This is a personal thing. When I first created man, it was just me and that man. Nobody else. When I created a woman, that dude was asleep. It was just me and her. And that's how he goes, take heed to yourself unless you forget the covenant that I've established with you, which you made with you. And make for yourselves carved images in the form of anything which the Lord your God has forbidden you. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire. He is a jealous God. He's a jealous God. In other words, I know what you need. I've delivered you and brought you out of this place. And now what's going to happen is that the things that you used to do that you're familiar with, I'm going to separate you from all that because that stuff is toxic and you don't need any of that stuff. Let me navigate your life because I will protect you. I will preserve you. I will bring you to a place of peace. I will restore your bruised soul. I will restore your trust and your faith because honestly, that's what was going on. They didn't no longer trust and, 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 and have faith in the Father. And God came to restore that faith and that place of innocence to, to, to our lives. I don't know about you. I grew up not having a good picture of who our Heavenly Father was. And one of the first things when I got out of my walk with the world, one of the first things he's, he's done and continues to do is reestablish my thinking concerning who truly the Father is and his overwhelming love for my life. He wanted to become their security. I don't know about you, but he's become my security. I'm secure in him. And because I'm secure in him, I don't know if you've ever been a, a, grew up in a, in a home where my dad... Every night he'd have a real simple routine. He'd go around the house, lock all the doors, and make sure that everything was secure. I never had to, you know, I never would see him do that, but I would hear. And so just hearing him and his feet walk around the hall and making sure everything was locked just brought me a sense of peace and safety. And your Heavenly Father does the same thing. And as a matter of fact, in Ephesians it said, God decided in advance to adopt you to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure to do it. Jeremiah 31 says, I've loved you with an everlasting love. And I know this is a simple message regarding God's love, but I'll, listen, I'm telling you, right after their deliverance, he had to establish this in their soul. Why? Because the tendency to run back or to run back to those things that are familiar is there not only for them, but for us as well. And so all of a sudden, whenever you come to Christ, maybe you're new to your faith or you've been, you know, just going around the same mountain over and over again. And I want you to know that God wants to lead you out of the, the enemy's toxic situations into a place of security and peace. Why? Because he loves you. He wants, you to be, he wants to become your security in him. And so that's why you wonder sometimes whenever you've sold out to the Lord, immediately doors start closing. Why? Because these things that you want to, you know, you have a tendency to, to, to lean towards, he, he wants to protect you from those things. Good. Good. And you can look back and it's like, man, thank God you didn't answer that prayer. I was going to marry this person and thank God she's, you know, died or whatever, whatever happened to her. <laughs> That's not a good illustration. All right. Sorry. <laughs> that, that, that tells you what's inside of me, right? Like kill him. Anyways, 
um, there are things that close, doors that close. Why he's protecting And you can look back and say, man, thank you, Lord. And there's open doors that come that will help you. And the desire that he has is to restore your trust. He wants to restore your trust in him because people have lost faith in him because they've dealt with people in the church. And so there's wounds and stuff that he wants to, 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 to deal with. But you, he will never get you to that place without a conversation. He will never get you to that place without having a talk, a good old talk. And this is what he did with in Exodus, the 20th chapter. And God spoke uh, these words to them right after their deliverance. He goes, hey, listen, I'm the Lord your God. He brought, I brought you out of this place of Egypt, out of this place of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything in heaven, earth, under the water, wherever. Don't bow down to them or serve them. Why? Because I, the Lord your God, I'm a consuming fire, but I'm a jealous God. And this is not like human jealousy. We can't put that on, God, on our Father. This is a holy extravagant that's rooted and grounded in his love for his people. He knows what you need, and he knows the best things that will help you get to that place. So he'll open doors and shut doors in your life. God spoke those words to them. The Apostle Paul also had a very similar spirit that his father. The same spirit that the father is, that we're looking at right here, is what the Apostle Paul had when he surrendered his life. Remember, he was a murderer before then. He was just like crazy. He wanted to destroy the kingdom of, of God. He restored him. Or, you know, he changed his life uh, there on the road to Damascus. And then all of a sudden, the Apostle Paul became, uh, he writes three quarters of the New Testament. But the heart that he has behind his writings is the love that he has, the Father's love that he has for his people. That's why he says in 1 Corinthians 10, shall we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he is? And in that context, in the Corinthian church, man, these guys were spiritually amazing, but they were also fleshly ruled. They were, they were eating things that were given to idols and idol worship. He goes, hey, your devotion can't be divided. He wants your full out loyalty. And so you can't be partaking of the, of, the, of the table of demons and the table of the Lord at the same time. you got to make a decision. And so he has that love that the Father has, and he carried the same spirit that his Father. 2 Corinthians 11 says this, Will you put up with some of my craziness? Will you put up with a little bit of my foolishness aside from me? Please, just for a moment, he says, I am jealous for you with the jealousy of God himself. I promise you as a pure bride to one husband. He goes, listen, man, my mandate is to help you understand who he is. I love you with that much passion. The same passion and love that the father has, that's what I have. And there's something about friends and pastors and individuals who really care about you. They care so much about you that they're able to just call you into a greater place. They, they're calling greatness out of you. But there's tension in those dialogues sometimes, Right? I love having folks like that. Did you know in scripture that there was actually a law written for those who dealt with jealousy? Anybody remember that? Well, I'll remind you this morning. So check this out. In, in, in Numbers, the fifth chapter, there was a, actually a law that took place. Hey, babe, where's that stuff at? Oh, awesome. Thank you, TJ. Notice what it says here. He goes, in Numbers 11, he goes, this is the law of jealousy. Make sure your husband or wife's reading, listening. Okay. When a wife, while under the husband's authority, goes astray and defiles herself, or when the spirit of jealousy comes upon a man and he becomes jealous of his wife, then he shall stand the woman before the Lord. He's going to bring his wife. Come on, woman, let's go. We're going to the priest. What is he going to do? It was a scary place, I bet. And the priest will execute all of the law upon her. What law? I'll tell you in a minute. Then the man shall be free from iniquity, but the woman shall bear her guilt if she's guilty. So the priest would come in and he would mix, he would take um, dirt and dust and he would mix a little bit of water, bitter water, into a cup. And he'd put the dirt from the ground. Let me see who's guilty in here. He'd mix it in and then he'd say, you need to drink this. And this... Uh, bitter water with dust represented a curse. If you drink it and you're guilty, a curse would come upon you. In the scripture, the curse was 
that your belly would become swollen. And your thighs would begin to rot. Isn't that interesting? It's like, what's happening here? You're a guilty woman. I knew it. Or she was innocent and she could go on about her business and the the guy would have to deal with his jealousy. Isn't that interesting? Anybody want to drink? (laughs) It'd be interesting to share with your spouse or your kids. Listen, the idea here is this. The reason why he put that on there, he goes, this stuff here is toxic for you. And this is the way I'm going to address it because I don't want you to disregard it. I want you to address the situation, resolve this conflict, resolve the thing that it's going on. For us New Testament folks, that's what it's significant for. In other words, he's saying shatter anything that divides your loyalties uh, to him. Just shatter it, kill it, destroy it. And, and, and I think that's the heart of this morning's message is like, man, I want to present you as a pastor and a minister to share God's word in such a way that it provokes you to live for him, to serve him. And love others. I mean, that's my whole goal. That's the reason why I do this. Is because I know I'm not here. I'm not from this place. I mean, I'm from this place. You know what I'm saying? I'm 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 a I'm a pilgrim passing through with a message. I will be responsible for how I communicate and share with this body uh, the scriptures from the Word of God to help you understand who your Father is. You know the chief, the, the the Pharisees and the religious people, they're they're like our modern day pastors and ministers and and, and people who um, people respected, but they were willing to give up Jesus because of envy and jealousy. And so they had a misrepresentation of who the Father is. And our goal and our role as a pastor as a minister is to help understand who really the Father is. And I'm telling you, your Father loves you, and He cares for you. And the stuff, the stuff that's happening or that's closing, it's because of his love for you. Why he doesn't want your loyalty to be divided. There's a great quote that I read this past week. It says, jealousy is the art of counting someone else's blessing instead of your own. Isn't that the way it is? It's counting someone else's blessing um, instead of your own. So application this week is this. Here's what I want to encourage you to do is spend some time with your father and just drink the bitter water. In other words, address it. Address it. Let him shine the light upon areas in your life where your soul is being divided, where your loyalty is being divided. And it could be a plethora of things. Pursuing something, a dream. I mean, it could be a plethora of things. And he will speak to you. And you know what? He'll never stop this whole process the rest of your life. Why? Because things that never tripped us up on the front end might tri- trip us up later on. And so this is constantly, in other words, I'm just saying, if you drink it, engage in a dialogue with your father to remove whatever it is that toxic, whatever it is that's, you know, trying to divide your heart from him. And there's so many lies out there, right? And here's the beautiful thing, and it seems like a, a weird deal or just like a simple thing, but embrace the affection that God has for you. I mean, there's, I can never get enough of reading of, of the Father's love towards me. He's constantly renewing my faith, constantly restoring my trust, constantly bringing to, to a place of innocence where when I look in the mirror, I'm okay. When I look at others, regardless of what they've done or said, that's not going to bother me because it's not against me personally. I don't take those things personally. I'm here for one reason, is to restore him. So Natalie and I deal with a lot of stuff. And, you know, we have insecurities. We have stuff, fears and stuff uh, that we've dealt with, jealousy stuff that we've dealt with all of our lives. And so we, we've addressed them. We've tried to create paths to help us in our, in our marriage. But one of the things that I just want to share with you that we do that's been a real, real beneficial for us is this, is that we have a secret code. We have a secret code named Bob. Can you say Bob? Bob. Bob's in the room. He's not in the room now. But so what happens is when we're in whatever space that we're in, whatever environment we wind up being, there's a lot of people, stuff's happening. One of us becomes insecure for whatever reason. Maybe there's a good looking dude and Natty's like gazing at him up and down. You know how she is. I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe whatever it is. And we feel insecure for whatever reason. Maybe she just had a bad day and I'm talking to someone and she's like, man, I wish you'd give me that attention that you're giving that person. Whatever it is, we stop blaming each other in those spaces. 
we started getting our code word. Like, hey, I think Bob just walked into the room. I'm like, oh, okay. It's like, where? Because where? I, I can tell when Natalie's looking around or she has a certain look, I'm looking around like, who's she? Who is she seeing? Who's a threat? But I don't blame her. It's like, man, you got to get over that. Not that again. Come on, baby. We've been doing this for 40-something years. Really? We're not 15 years more. You want to say that. But in the middle of that moment when Bob is present, I get closer to her to assure her that, listen, you can trust me. You're, you're in a safe place. I'm not going anywhere. Or vice versa. Hey, babe, I think Bob, Bob and Bob's brother and Bob's uncles in this room. <laughs> And so she goes, really? And it's almost like flattery. It's like, um, so she just, I'm going home with you. I was like, yeah, darn right you are. And that's how we deal with some of that stuff. And so what I'm saying is that you have to address it. Drink the bitter herb and address it so that you can get further along. You don't need to stay in that toxic environment the rest of your life. Little Susie, beautiful little girl, loved her daddy so very much. And he also, she also loved the pearls that daddy gave her. So very much. She would always walk around with them. At the age of six, that was her most treasured possession, is the pearls that daddy gave little Susie. Even though they were fake, it didn't bother her. She just knew that it came from dad. And the reason why she was, it was so precious to her is because dad would work a lot. Sometimes he'd be gone two, three days, a week at a time or so. But whenever dad would come back home, man, they would celebrate it. They would have fun. There would always be a time where just the dad and daughter would, would have a great time, a great experience. And one particular time when he was gone out of uh, the country, dad came back and they were cel- celebrating that whole day. But at the night, she was, he was going to put her to bed. And uh, she was all excited about that. They would tell stories or whatever. But one of the things that dad asked was, sweetie, do you love me? He goes, oh, yeah, dad. He goes, more than anything, I love you. He goes, more than anything? He goes, yeah, more than anything. He goes, hmm. He paused and he said, more than those pearls? Because she always had those pearls. So, oh, Daddy, you know I can't give up these pearls. I love these pearls. You've given them to me. He goes, oh, okay, I understand. No problem. So he kissed her Good night. She falls asleep. She falls asleep thinking about the question Dad asked. She wakes up thinking about the question that Dad asked. She goes to school all day, comes back, and she's still thinking about the question that Dad asked. And finally, at night, she goes to Daddy. He goes, Daddy, I've been thinking about what you said all night, all day. He in here, I want to give you these pearls because I love you more than these pearls. And the daddy was like, man, I'm so glad to hear you saying that. So he goes and he grabs this little box and it was a box and inside of that box were genuine, real, authentic pearls for his little girl. Isn't that beautiful? And so my point is the father wants to give you and I something similar as well. But we are so grippy with the imitation and the fake stuff. And he says, if you're willing to give that up, I got some genuine love and care and passion for you that will bring security that you've never experienced before. Are you willing to do that? What pearls is God hoping that you release today? What are some of those things? What costume jewelry is he asking you to give up for you to drop? Would you change that lesser gift for the greater gift of God's authentic love. That's my prayer, is that this week we contend with that stuff in our house just to draw us a little bit closer to him because he he loves us and he's deserving and worthy of it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, you're so good to us. I'm so thankful, Father God, of your security and that you've given us and your love that you've given us. Man, God, I just pray that this... Our body, Lord God, would understand how safe of a place that is. And we would teach that to our kids, our grandkids, our neighbors, that it just comes out spilling into our lives. So, Lord, help us, Lord God. I just pray that the toxic toxic stuff, the stuff that will harm us and hurt us and hurt our home, Lord God, I, I just pray that those things would just be broken, that the fire of your spirit would just quench all that stuff. So we just love you. We honor you. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everyone that agreed with that said, amen. Amen. Hey, listen, I don't know when the last time I tell you, but I absolutely love every single one of you. And you guys are a blessing to me. You guys make me happy just by coming here, being faithful, and serving. So we appreciate you guys. We'll see you next Sunday. If you are ever in the Seguin area, 
come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.